I have just got my hands on the Galaxy Fold. I joined Samsung's queue in London at 5.30 this morning and with my own money, managed to get one of only a few models they've got available. So we're gonna take a look at everything that is inside this exciting package. So here we are, here's the actual thing. It's a smaller box than I thought, because I was pretty sure they did like this big foldy outy thing, but apparently they've slimmed the packaging down. Galaxy Fold 5G, of course in the UK, um, I believe they're only selling the 5G model, whereas I think if you're in the US, there is a 4G model as well. Don't know why we don't get that, but hey, I want 5G, because why wouldn't we? Uh, it is of course fully wrapped in cellophane. There's a whole load of IMEI numbers, which I'm not gonna give you. Um, so let's dive in. That's when we bring back the blade. There we go. So now we can do this. Aha! Ah Aha! So that part can go away. So now we're starting to get to the meat, the heart of the matter. It's actually a small white box that nicely slots inside what looks like a magazine stand. Put that there, one on each side. Nice little flap to lift up. And there we have the phone in all its laid flat glory. I'm gonna put that aside just for now and take a look at what else we get in the box. So this bit just lifts straight out and get rid of that. Ooh, unfold the future. Meet your Galaxy Fold. Uh, okay, so what else do we have in the box here? Uh, this looks like instructions. Ooh, there's some sort of, ah, okay. So you do get a case. You do get a two halves of a case because of course, this is a folding phone, so you need to protect it almost twice. Uh, looks fine, looks like a fake carbon fiber. It can't be real carbon fiber. Although maybe for two grand, it should be real carbon fiber. Um, yeah, various other warranties, warranties, uh, etc., And of course, a little SIM card pin tucked into the top. Again, that's all detritus, and I'm gonna put that aside. I'll keep onto the case for now. Other things of interest in the box though, we do get a UK fast charger, which is good because this phone does support fast charging, as long as you've got a charger that also um, allows for fast charging, so that's good. Um, what do we have here? I assume a cable. It is indeed a cable. USB-C, of course, because this is a USB-C phone. Tiny box this time. Oh, we've just got little headphone tips but speaking of the headphones what you actually get with the Galaxy Fold unlike with the Note or the S10 is their Samsung's Galaxy Buds their wireless earbuds they come as standard with the Galaxy Fold whereas previously if you bought the Note 10 or the Galaxy S10 the Galaxy Buds is an optional extra um, or I think maybe a pre-order bundle if you were among the first to pre-order you get those um, included but it's standard with the Galaxy Fold, at least in the UK. I'm not sure about the US, but I'm pretty sure it is. Uh, so now we are back to the phone itself, and it is wrapped already in plastic and the care instructions, so I'm gonna be quite careful in how to take this off, but as anyone knows, removing the plastic from the phone is the most satisfying part of buying a phone. Ah. Ah. Didn't that feel nice? It certainly did. That can go away. So that means that we do not have another screen protector. So already I can see on the top, there's nothing else on the top of this screen which looks like it should be removed, which is definitely what changed from last time. Um, if we look on the back, already I'm getting my fingerprints all over it. This is the black model, which is the only one that I could get um, in Samsung's flagship store in London. Um, they had about five units. Uh, I think there is also a white model and there's maybe some sort of green version as well, but I think that will always depend on the regions where you are. So on the back of the phone, immediately we can see we've got the three cameras. That's basically the same as the uh, S10 Plus, I believe, a standard zoom, a telephoto lens, and then there's a super wide angle lens as well. 
Um, aside from my fingerprints, the other thing that we'll see on the outside is a external screen. This means that when it's closed, you can actually still use it as a phone. You can see who's calling, you can see what notifications you're getting. Let's have a look around the edges because we'll see uh, USB-C down here. We've got um, speakers, we've got SIM card tray, another speaker on the top, um, and I think that is a fingerprint scanner and power and volume on the side. What you won't find, of course, is a 3.5mm headphone jack, so it is good that we've got wireless earbuds included as standard. But of course, it's the moment that we have all been waiting for, myself included. Let's bend this beast. Let's do that. Now, this is the first time. Uh, ah, that was quite satisfying. It's quite like closing a, um, like a glasses case, one of those awful snappy cases you get with glasses. Um, it's much like doing that quite easy to do. The only problem that I do have already is that I naturally want to close it by putting my thumb in the middle of the screen to give you that pivot point, which means that you're always going to have a bit of a fingerprint right in the middle of the screen. I don't think that's necessarily a problem. But the motion feels quite nice, it feels quite smooth, it doesn't feel gritty or cheap, it feels quite satisfying. Um, obviously over time if you're doing this a hundred times a day, every day for the next couple of years. We're gonna to have to wait and see how this hinge and of course the screen itself actually puts up with everyday wear and tear. Before I turn it on, other thing we'll notice on the front, obviously this is all screen, is we do have the front facing cameras. Now there's two cameras here, I believe that's a regular and a wide lens, but I may be wrong. Um, and that'll also have the sensors for face unlock and ambient light sensors, that kind of thing. So we do have a bit of a notch in this screen. It isn't completely uh, one piece. This does cut into the display. But even looking at it there, it looks fairly out of the way. I don't think that's gonna get, um, get in the way of your content too much. So let's actually fire it up. I'm assuming there's some battery life and we don't have to plug it in. That is a big assumption. Oh, it buzzed and it says Galaxy Fold 5G. So we're booted in, I've gone past the uh, Android logins and all that, and we are finally at the actual main home screen. And it's really interesting to see um, because it's, it's a very square screen. It's almost a one-to-one -one aspect ratio. And on a lot of phones, we've come to see 16.9 or in many cases, 21.9 aspect ratios where the screen is really tall and narrow, which is great if you're using it in landscape mode for video. Whereas this is one big square. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what videos and uh, photos look like on this screen. I can see already under these video lights when you catch the angle just right there is a crease. I can already see that bit of a crease. So it's it's interesting that that is there by default. So this isn't something that appears over time once you use it and what's, once the, the screen plastic loosens up. That is there and as I move it up and down and I can see the lights reflecting off the surface there is a a gentle ripple. It is not a smooth glass surface. It is, as you would expect on, say, a Note or a Galaxy phone or indeed any other phone, there is very much that sort of wavy look. So as we fold this in, although obviously the reflections of the light bends, the picture itself doesn't bend, it doesn't change, it doesn't change colour in a weird way or start to flicker. It just remains there until it snaps shut, which then lets us use the screen on the outside. Now when you are looking at the outside. This looks like quite an old-fashioned phone. It's very, very long and thin. It's almost the same form factor as an old Nokia 5420. Was that the one with the stubby little aerial on top? Everyone had them. I had one. It was great. Um, but as we can see, it does have its own small screen on the outside, and it looks just like any other Android phone would. You swipe up. You swipe around the interface, there's all your apps. If you want to go into Chrome, that will work just like any other smartphone, only it's on quite a small and narrow screen. That's handy if you don't want to unfold it into the whole thing, or you just want to make a quick call. There is a speaker on the outside of the phone as well, so you can actually use it as your phone when it's folded. So that's quite, that's kind of it on in terms of the design. As you can see, when it folds up, we've got this nice, neat edge on the outside, just say Samsung. There's no gap, there's nowhere for anything major to come apart, um, but because of the folding mechanism, um, as we saw on the warning, this is not water resistant, it's not dust proof, there's no IP68 rating on this like there is with um, any other phone. So um, 
that's a little disappointing for me because I use my phone a lot just to prop up in the shower so I can listen to a podcast in the morning. And although it might not get wet, there's a lot of steam in a shower room. Um, so it means that, you know, if you've got a waterproof phone, you can get away with doing that. Or even just taking calls if you're outside in the rain, which in England, there's usually a lot of rain. Um, so this is a phone that you're going to have to be a lot more careful with. If it's raining, don't get it out. Certainly don't unfold it. Maybe you could get away with just using that for a quick call but it is not a phone that you would want to actually get wet. Overall, I do think it's quite a neat design. It's certainly thick when you're holding it when it's closed, um, but when you open it up, it, you get a lot more screen real estate. I'm really looking forward to seeing what videos and things look like on this phone and certainly how the functionality works when it is a big screen. What I'd like to see is maybe an app that can use half of the screen perhaps for the keyboard and half the screen for whatever you're doing. Um, I don't know if any apps offer that yet, but that would be quite a good use for this. Um, the big question of course is going to be both whether this actually makes sense to use as your main phone and how well this screen puts up with an actual real life unfolding it every day, how well this puts up to it. Because interesting that Samsung's design, the screen folds in on itself, whereas what Huawei has done with its Mate X, the screen folds back on itself. Two very, very different designs, and until we get them both in and spend a lot of time with them, we don't know which one is going to work best. Samsung's is, of course, first to market, um, so this is the one we're going to be testing first. But what do you think of the phone? Are you excited to have the first folding phone? Do please let us know your thoughts in the comments below and we will see you next time.